Hey, welcome back to Matt's Garage DIY. Today, we're gonna weld some plastic. Today, we're specifically gonna be talking about HDPE, or high density polyethylene. It's a thermoplastic used to make milk jugs, all sorts of food storage containers, as well as things like this, my Argo, or kayaks, and pretty much everything in between. Manufacturers love this plastic because of its high strength and durability, as well as its easy formability once it's heated. It's also easily recyclable, and fortunately for DIYers like you and I, easy to repair. So today we're gonna to take a look at two different repairs. The idea is basically the same, but you have to be a little bit different or use a little bit different technique with each. First up, I'm gonna take this milk jug, I'm gonna cut a big slice in the side, then I'll patch it, fill it back up with water, and we'll see that it still holds water or is waterproof. Next up, we're gonna move on to the Argo, which is about eighth inch thick, HDPE, has a bunch of holes in it. Uh, I'm just gonna patch some of those holes, sort of show you the process for that or when you're dealing with a thicker plastic. First up, here's our milk jug. I'll just put a little bit of blue food coloring and water in there. We've got, got about a three inch cut in the side. So we're gonna patch this up and then we'll see if it still holds water. As we get started, a couple things to remember. First off, hot plastic sticks to hot plastic. Hot and cold plastic do not stick together. We've got that quite hot. I take another piece that's cold. Press those together. Nothing happens, they do not stick. As you can see with this piece, it, was, it had gone clear, it was curling up. So, hot and cold don't stick together. Both pieces are hot. I can see those are stuck together. Rule number two. As you saw as I was heating this up, it became very soft, very flimsy. You have to be careful to not overheat the plastic. Depending on the shape of the piece that you're working with, it's going to collapse in on itself. Not the end of the world. You can let that piece cool and then sort of heat it back up and push it into shape. But depending on what you're trying to do, for example, with this milk jug, we are going to need to try to add some support in behind so that this jug does not sort of fall in or collapse on itself. So tools, basically I've got a piece of a hockey stick. Yeah, I'm in Canada, so that's what I have available. But I've cut that with a little bit of a bevel so that I can stick that inside the jug, provide a bit of support on the backside as I press the pieces together. I also have an old screwdriver that's been bent and I just can use that as a pushing tool uh, to press the hot pieces together. You can use really anything that you want. Here's a scrap of another milk jug that I'm going to use kind of as our patch. And that's pretty much it. Make sure your work surface is clean. And of course, the heat gun. I've just started the edge whoops, of both pieces. Kind of get that pressed together. After I have the initial kind of bond, it becomes a little easier. that nice and tight there we go so here's our flap or our bandage we're gonna put on there now I just got to continue heating this heat both pieces together that's probably the trickiest is is initially kind of heating two separate pieces and getting them stuck together but now I'll be able to sort of focus the heat right in this gap and then kind of slowly continue to work as I fold that in My patch got a little ugly there, kind of folded on itself. Not a big deal, I just heated it up and stuck it down. Just gonna cut another tiny little piece, stick on there and finish that off. All right, not my prettiest or finest craftsmanship, but we got the patch on there. 
Again, this is a very thin material, so really tough to work with, but uh, I'm gonna let that cool and then we'll see if it holds water. Time for the test. I'm gonna put a couple more drops of blue food coloring in here so that water level shows up a little better on camera. Let's take a closer look at this patch. So as you can see right there and right at this corner, two small drips coming out. The majority of this patch has worked great. Uh, looks like I probably got a little too thin right there and then this corner maybe not quite hot enough when it's stuck. The beauty of working with this HDPE, I can just dump the water out, heat it back up, warm those pieces back up, put a little bit more pressure on it and the leak will be fixed. Moving on to some thicker HDPE, Again, basically the same process. If anything, this is a little bit more forgiving, although you still have to be careful not to overheat it. Basically, I've got a series of holes like this. They're about dime size, maybe not quite dime size, that I've been patching. This one right here, you can see, was a little bigger. Uh, that was almost the size of a quarter, so I'm having to do that in a couple steps, just because, again, I'm not able to get to the back of that and really sort of support anything. And then up here, that's one that is basically finished, and I've just been touching it up. So first thing when you're looking at the hole, you want to make sure there isn't any really kind of soft edges when i push on this this is all pretty good you will if if your hole is due to wear sort of like the keel of a kayak uh, you may have to sort of push some of this out of the way because potentially it's gotten quite thin for a ways back in this case um, there's just something's been sort of bolted onto the top and kind of created a bunch of these tearing holes so i'm good to basically just start working or filling with this i've cleaned away the paint somebody had painted all of this if it hasn't been painted but there is oxid oxidation from the sun you'll want to sort of sand or scrape that clean so again, with my heat gun, I'm just going to start heating this up. I have bought uh, just a little package of these sticks of HDP. just bought them online. Uh, super cheap. You can get them in a variety of colors. I bought black because I didn't really care. Uh, this is all going to be painted black anyways. And if you don't want to buy sticks, you can use milk jugs, bottle caps. Like I said, there's a ton of uh, options for where to get this plastic. I've just used this because it was uh, easy to, easier to work with in the kind of environment that I've got going on here. So want to make sure again we get all of this nice and warm it will start to turn kind of shiny at the same time i will want to be heating up the stick as well so as you can see right around the hole already starting to darken a little bit once that kind of gets a bit of a shiny glaze to it or a sheen to it um, then we should be ready to start sticking these pieces together. I'm gonna start working this a little bit more. If, as you can see, like, you know, I can push right into this, but if you start to find that your base piece of material is getting too soft, just stop, let it cool, start again. This doesn't need to be done all in one step. I'm just kind of pushing these pieces together. So I'm gonna let that cool. And I'll come back and give it another go. So on my base piece again you can see that really nice shine or sheen showing up that's showing that surface is ready to sort of accept the uh, filler stick that you're working on. All right, so I'm really happy with the way that's turning out. Kind of looks like a big, ugly mess right now, but as soon as that cools, very easy to shape, whether you use a knife or a file. So we'll come back in a few minutes and I'll touch that up and make it actually look like something. All right, so our working piece is cooled. I'm just going to be using a uh, single cut file and start shaping this a little bit. So let's see what we can make it look like. All right, so shapes up quite nicely with the file. Still a little bit of an indentation there, but now I do have a good solid backing in there. So I will just basically repeat the process, fill that in again, 
get more filing, and this will be ready for paint. There you have it. Plastic welding, DIY style. Hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for my next video. And be sure to, as always, click that like and subscribe button to stay up to date on what's coming out next.